Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Muriel, thank you for this introduction. Um, my name is uh, repeated uh, Stefan Keller. I'm from the Fraunhofer Institute of Solar Energy Systems located in Freiburg. And today I would like to uh, give you a little bit an idea what we do, especially in terms of fuel cell stack characterization. So within our institute, we have three departments working on the topic hydrogen. So the first one is uh, from Dr. Achim Schad, uh, Department of Thermal Chemical Processes. They do mainly synthesis of uh, H2 and CO to derive liquid uh, energy carriers. They also do catalytic evaporation and life cycle assessments. Then we have a department mainly working on electrolysis topics and also on power to gas topics. They do also economic um, case studying in these fields. And uh, the third uh, department is the Department of Fuel Cell System. This is also where I am uh, working in. And we do mainly characterization of um, single cells, also spatially or locally resolved. Um, we do also production research. This is a quite new uh, activity, but very uh, promising and interesting. And um, we have also a look on system technology, for example, in terms of testing balance of plants components. Now, we're in this business for over 25 years now, so this is a quite long of time, and we, accordingly, we have quite a lot of experience. And what we can offer to the industry is, for example, performance characterization. This is classically um, characterized uh, fuel sets and stacks. Um, we have a look on local phenomena, so what is going on, get a better understanding for these phenomena. Um, we can offer climate tests. We have two different climate chambers. I will show them uh, in the next slide. We do lifetime analysis, for example, accelerated stress tests, so where we apply certain profiles to see in an accelerated way how the durability of fuel cells and materials are. We investigate contamination effects, so for example, if you feed hydrogen into the fuel cell and the hydrogen is contaminated by uh, something like uh, sulfur or, or CO or uh, nitrogen oxide, um, how these effects uh, how these things affect the performance and also what the mechanisms are. And we do testing, for example, balance of plants components um, in the system area, where we, for example, take valves and see how um, durable they are in a uh, condition, an environment, um, how it is in a fuel cell system, for example, high temperature, high humidification, and um, hydrogen-rich gas. Now today I would focus on the characterization of fuel cell stacks. So um, if you have not only one single cell, but a an, stack of um, certain fuel cells, we have there a laboratory which is specified or specialized for these kind of tests. And there are three main equipment. The first one is our test bench. Um, it is from the manufacturer of Fucon. They are also here in the booth. Capable of up to 20 kilowatt uh, electrical power or 1000 amps. Um, accordingly, the gas supply is matched to the size of the, these stacks and goes on the hydrogen side, on the anode, up to 400 liter per minute, on the cathode, up to 1,600. Gas temperature can be regulated up to 100 degree approximately, and we have a humidification system on anode and cathode side, um, which can regulate uh, dew points of up to 90 degree. This depends a little bit on the pressure and on the uh, flow level. Cooling um, can dissipate uh, 40 kilowatt in maximum, so we can also drive the stacks uh, quite uh, low in terms of cell voltage where they produce more heat. And the pressure automation goes up to uh, four bar. Now, a special thing about this is we have a very broad range of automation um, possibilities. We can have a fully 24 seven automated um, operation of the station. If you do, for example, long-term tests, and uh, we can also apply different load profiles by a um, script-based um, automation um, language. So that we're very free of implementing what we want to do. And one example of how this can benefit the results of the test is shown here. Uh, this is an example where we have a, a long-term test which goes over several thousand hours, a certain profile which stops and starts the fuel cell stack which is tested every day. And I would like to show you two um, starting processes of two different days. And what you can see is the first day, we see the temperature, uh, cooling inlet temperature, which is which here, cooling outlet temperature, dew point temperatures, voltage and current. This is day one. And if we switch to uh, the second day, there is um, hardly any difference. This is any difference. This is especially obvious when you put these two slides uh, simply 
uh, overlap it. So this is one benefit. If you have an automated operation, you have a good reproducibility of your response, of your stack response um, for the whole system. And this gives you a um, good comparability between the test results, especially if you have a long-term test to see how it is at the beginning and at the end of these tests. Another important thing is our climate chamber. This is our large climate chamber, which is 2.2.2 uh, meters. So you can walk in. As you see it on the picture here, it goes down to minus 50 degrees. And even with a heat load of 10 kilowatt, we can achieve minus 20 degrees. So this is perfectly suitable for free start investigations, for example. And we can also adjust the humidification, so, so the complete climate condition inside the chamber, not only the temperature. And this makes us, uh, uh, in a way, uh, special, as we can provide up to 2,000 cubic meter per hour of, these of, this, uh, of air conditioned accordingly, um, what we want to do. This, for example, makes it possible to test um, so-called open cathode stacks, so stacks where they do not only um, emit the waste heat into the ambient, but also the produced water. And by applying this high load of conditioned air, we can also test these kind of stacks as the waste heat and the produced water is simply um, retracted out of the climate chamber. Now an example how we use this chamber is shown here. We were also part in the project called AutoStack Core. Maybe some of you know it. Um, the, game of this, or the goal of this project was to develop a stack platform which is suitable for be, to be used in automotive applications or also buses or trucks. Here we see a 20 cell assembly. So the stack here consists of 20 single cells. It was put into our climate chamber and the goal was to have a startup time of less than 30 seconds at minus 20 degree for half of the nominal power. And we performed these tests and uh, we could achieve even 13 seconds starting at minus 20 degree. So the stack was really overnight cooled down to the minus 20 degree. Uh, no preheation, nothing. Simply put the gases on and start uh, drawing current. And with this um, operating strategy, uh, we could achieve a very uh, short heat up time and a very short time up to um, half of the nominal load. So free start test is one typical thing we can perform by combining test bench and climate chamber. What is, um, gives uh, even more um, possibilities and also a better understanding of uh, the devices you want to test is the black box you show here at the arrow. This is an impedance measurement system. It has um, 28 channels, so we can um, connect up to 28 single cells or also blocks of cells to investigate the impedance. And it is specially designed by a pre-amplification system which increases the signal to noise ratio and by low inductance cable. The goal of this is simply to minimize the influence of the measurement signal from the stack as much as possible so that we measure the impedance of the device under test of the stack and not the impedance of the cabling or the system. Now impedance spectroscopy works uh, uh, like you see it here. You have normally an operating point of the fuel cell. You apply a small um, AC current and you measure the answer of this AC current. You can do this at different frequencies and then calculate the impedance. Typically, you get something like, um, like you see it here on the left side, an impedance plot, a Nyquist plot in this case. Here you see the different frequency ranges. And by applying different frequencies, you can address different processes that are taking place at the same time in the fuel cell. And therefore, you have a better understanding where the losses inside your fuel cell stack comes from. If you only measure the voltage, you have all the losses um, accumulated within the uh, voltage, but if you take the impedance, take certain frequencies, you can address fast processes from uh, yeah, mid-fast processes from slow processes like is shown here. And then there are typical areas in this um, plot where you can extract certain information like the high frequency part here, ohmic. So, so electron and proton conductivity and linear branch gives information about the catalyst layer, charge transfer activity of your catalyst layer. And here you have the mass um, transport resistance, uh, the mass transport um, area with low processes. And what we can then do with this information is, for example, apply a certain preparation strategy for a free start. This is shown here. We see the high frequency on this side over time. And in this case, we operated the fuel cell very normal. 
And at this point here, we switched from humidified gases to dry gases. And you see immediately this high frequency resistance increases a lot. So here it goes it almost doubles. And this gives a very good indication about the humidification of the membrane. And this is important, for example, for free start, if you, you want to dry it out, that you do not have any droplets in your system, but it should not be as uh, too much dried out that you can achieve a uh, free start and have still a good protonic conductivity. So this is one example where we can use, in this case, the high frequency impedance. Another example is the low frequency uh, impedance in this area. Here you can do a certain kind of analyze of this um, area here. And the impedance in this area um, depends in a certain way from the gas flow through the channels of each single cell. And if you use this information, you can do a kind of gas flow distribution within your stack without putting any probe, any gas sensor or something in the flow field channel. And this is another example of how we can use the impedance data. At least we are um, working on this to establish it as a real characterization method for getting a gas flow distribution inside your fuel cell stack without putting any sensor or something into the stack. <laughs> this is also uh, where I come to the end here. You see down to the summarize what we can provide in terms of test st uh, stack testing um, with our test bench and our capabilities. I would also like to uh, mention the other presentations from my colleagues from our institute. Um, some of them have already been uh, held, but you can use it, see it on YouTube or on the FairPR homepage. And uh, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, my colleague Thomas Jungmann will also give a presentation about testing balance of plant systems. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan Keller. Are there any questions from the audience? Okay, I can tell so far this morning was not very interactive with the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> let me have the first one. Can you maybe el elaborate a little bit more about the test characterization or test methods you're using? Yeah. So beside these I showed here, we also have um, other possibilities for stack testing. Um, you see it also here on this uh, last slide here. Here we can also perform um, short circuit tests. This, ah, yeah, this is how the... Um, setup looks like. So here this is a kind of um, safety behavior to um, analyze how in the case of a short circuit the stack performs. Therefore we see a lot of cabling. We can here go up to 5,000 amperes for a short time duration and then we can uh, investigate how the behavior of the stack is in case of short uh, circuiting. Thank you very much. Further questions from the audience now? Okay, then I have another one. Mm -hmm. um, I realized during the presentation so far that from the market there is kind of a push for standardization. Um, how is it from your side, from the research side? Do you also see that problem or are you working on those kind of topics? Yeah, so we had some projects in this case, but uh, they are already finished now. Um, we have a kind of standardization. So it depends in which area you use it. We, for example, use it for uh, naming certain measurement points, for example, that if you... Uh, present the data that people who are working in this field are very familiar with the um, um, names which are written there. Other um, uh, of these regulations are, for example, the quality of the fuel. This is something where we are looking at when we investigate the fuel contamination to see if these limits are enough or if they're even too close, that it's really um, unnecessary to keep them low close. Um, so this is something where we uh, partly work on the normalize or, or on this um, standardization process, but it's not our main main topic. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Stefan Keller. If you have further questions or do want to discuss the research topics, please go to their booth C58. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.